something for me. I don't know who. I didn't recognize him. I was waiting to hear from... Okay. Well, watch out, all right? Night. His name was Ackroyd. Paul Ackroyd. How long have you known him, Mr. McDowell? I didn't know him. You know all of them? Not even in connection with Dr. Sangster? No. You've been very active on Dr. Sangster's behalf. I'm his solicitor. It's a pity you haven't been more active. Well, let's get back to this investigation, shall we? OK. Tell me about Ackroyd. He was a patient in the Andrew Duncan unit of the Royal Edinburgh Hospital. He went missing last night. That's for users, isn't it? Detoxification and rehabilitation. Yeah. What was the matter with Ackroyd? We're waiting for the post-mortem. I'm not talking about the cause of death. That's pretty obvious. He was killed by a bomb that was meant for me. How did he set it off? He pushed something through your letterbox. What? Where is it? An envelope, a piece of paper, both badly charred. They've been sent to the lab for examination. Wasn't that taking a liberty with my property? Who'd want to see me off with a bomb? Let's get this straight. You wouldn't have been seen off. You're a healthy man. Which brings us back to what was the matter with Ackroyd. My guess is that the device was placed as a frightener by some local crank who didn't like the fact that you support Dr. Sangster's campaign. You're joking. I think you're underestimating the strength of hostility in this area. That's bollocks. Thanks for your help, Mr. McDowell. We know where to find you if we need you. Are you OK? I spoke to you two minutes ago. I'm OK. You've been known to lie. You mind not saying that round here? Well, you satisfied? Sorry, I just don't want to lose my instructing solicitor at this stage of the game. Well, that's well. You can't be a good solicitor. Why do you want to be an advocate, then? You know, the cushy life, the wake, no hassle, no explosive devices, that kind of thing. Come on, you're going home. I called Catherine. I have to. She's furious. She says we're to take no more risks. You better review your position, then, because it's getting riskier all the time. What do you know about the resource utilisation department at the Scottish office? I fought their case, remember? The great Scottish marmalade scandal. Do they deal in land parcels too? The same outfit? Depends on your definition of resource. It appears to me that anything the efficient Mr Lennox wants it to mean. He's made his name catching the overflow from other departments. Lennox? The boss. The one who wants me reported to the Dean for refusing to wave the flag in Brussels. There's a tie-up with Jet Holmes. Jet Holder, tonight's evening news, pages 18, 19, sports section. What? It was in the envelope from Ackroyd. Tell me you were doing the lawyer. I'm not telling you now either. It's stupid. You wouldn't have pulled out anyway. They're going to use this in court. The big one's out of picture. Ackroyd. Surprise, surprise. It's singing and dancing time. You bloody sing and dance then. McDowell's getting to look heroic. Whose idea here? One of your crazy little whims? All the bomb says is the doctor's in trouble. So is anyone connected with him. An expression of local feeling. The clinic will be moved. Look at that. Beautiful. Heading for Treasure Island. What was Ackroyd doing going to see McDowell? Christ knows. What's the matter? Don't get yourself confused thinking. You get lines to learn for the trial. There's the evidence, man. You're lucky. You know the evidence. Now that is crazy. Your lawyer getting a tip off. One of his own side hates McDowell.
out there's a courier on the ship. He'll pick up a parcel in Amsterdam and bring it in. But when? We should tell the police. No, we wait. The finale's got to be at this end. How did Aykroyd get AIDS? Dirty needles? Mm. He was a dealer in a small way. Pushed some dope around the school when he was in the sports stuff. That's right. I remember. There was a stink at Dundonald's about a year ago. They sacked five six formers for possession. They'd all got university places, so it didn't affect their careers. There was no publicity. Where'd you pick that up? Some of the parents wanted to sue. A couple came to the firm for advice, but they'd no case. They thought their kids had been sacked as an example to the younger ones. Who could be there still, some of them, snorting their way through their A-levels. Or which of the overprivileged little sods has been got at? Do you mind if I take this? No. Where are you going, Joe? I'm late. I've got an appointment. No, listen, we have to talk about the case. We're seriously short of time. I thought you said you cleared your surgery. I do home visits. Do you get the feeling he couldn't care whether we win or lose? No, that's what bugs me about him. He's determined to win. He's got two deaths on his conscience. He just won't give till he's ready. Any point in calling the school, spinning them a line? Oh, no, forget it. The parents pay 8,000 a year protection money. No, I'll talk to Catherine. You want your wrist slapped again? She's friendly with Campbell Reed. He's a son at Dundonald's, about the same age. He might have some ideas. You can't nobble a judge. On second thoughts, maybe you can. Is it a romance? What? Castle and Helen? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You could tap your own romance, maybe. About Lennox. You're due back soon, isn't he? David Strachan and the Scottish office colours. Well, you seem better informed than I am. Oh, I don't know. This place makes me feel optimistic. I couldn't bear it if we lost. We better not lose, then. The bar salutes your commitment, Ms. Abercorn. You're an outsider, Greg. You don't know what we're taking on here. There won't be any salutes from the bar. They'll be too busy closing ranks. Half the members are Dundonald's old boys. So were their fathers, so were their grandfathers. They send their sons there. Terrific. The bar, the Scottish office, the property boys, the pimps. A bit of luck will bring the whole buggering lot down. Catherine, you can't. It's far too early for you to consider coming back to work. No, really, I can handle this. I'd suggest we cut our losses, throw all our weight behind the Sangster inquiry, hope for the best possible publicity. There's a quite extraordinary feeling of united outrage in the office following Gregor's lucky escape. Rest assured, and no more to... Very well, if you must, but only for a few hours. Right, bye. Daily Director, I take it. How is she? Pretty well, considering. <laughs> Starting to look the part, Archie. Won't it be hard handing back the senior partner's chair? I wouldn't have this job for all the money in the world. It's a little excessive, isn't it? I'd settle for the price of a quick divorce and punitive maintenance. I think I know what you'd settle for, Viv. What's the news from the firing line? McDowell rides again. Thank God for his resilience. We're going to need it. Trade has never been worse. They were poised for flight anyway. The figure in Mariport, if you remember. You don't think it's a bit of a coincidence? That they should all fly at once? Something of a migration, I'd say. Three trusted and respected clients winding up their business with us. You want respect? You gotta earn it. Some of us are trying to, Viv. You mean I'm not? Look, I'm employing a babysitter double time after hours to cope with the workload. My kids are doing without music lessons. Things could be worse, I suppose. Copies of your report, together with statements of our accounts, could even now be doing the rounds of the London Law Consortium. I imagine that's where our clients touch down. What are you saying? I'm saying that the night Catherine collapsed and you found her. The account's password had been entered into the computer and not cancelled. Before we go any further, let's bring in one of our colleagues, shall we? The one that's an expert in defamation? That won't be necessary. Catherine uses the computer. She didn't that night. I think we have a problem of compatibility here, Vivian. And don't say that's another story of your life. 
If you're looking for my resignation, forget it. I'll go when I'm ready. Don't force me to take drastic steps. Drastic steps will lead you straight to a tribunal for unfair dismissal. Then whatever the results, the affairs of this practice will then become public. Is that what you want? Come on, say it. Say it. Oh, you didn't need to say it, I know. Oh, God, I can see. You're HIV positive. No, it's okay now. It's passed off. Good. It, it does that sometimes. It's inactive at the moment. I've seen them when it gets bad. Oh, God, they go like skeletons. You're still injecting? I told you last night. What else am I going to do? I can help you. I can get you away somewhere. Oh, like you did Paul Ackroyd. Christ, he's dead. I know. The killer made a mistake. If you were willing to help... Oh, press off! Press! Press off! Yeah, well, Julie was willing. Julie wouldn't go away. She stayed with her mother. That's how they got to her. Yeah, she was clean, though, Julie. Give her take a few bad habits. She didn't have the real problem. And you could help me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, you picked the wrong one. No deal. I don't make deals. I'll do what I can for you anyway. Oh, yeah? Well, just stop coming on like Jesus Christ, will you? Who needs it? Now, listen. Oh, listen to me. No. Listen. Come in. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. I know this is unusual, but it is urgent. Catherine, my dear woman. Come in. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. What on earth are you doing here? You should be at home, in bed. I'm all right, Campbell. I'm going back to work. Oh. I won't overdo it. Hmm. I've just talked to Alex. And she's convinced that the implications of the Sangster case are enormous. And there are other problems. I won't go into them now, but about Sangster. Alex has some idea that I could ask for your advice without compromising you. Compromising? I've decided I can't. In the circumstances. You'll know why in the next few days. When this is all over, I'm going to take you out and buy you a hugely impressive lunch. And we can revive that conversation about the pros and cons of the solitary life. I come to think it's pretty overrated, the solitary life. Catherine. Let's leave it there. I'll call you next week. No. Wait, please. I must talk to you. It's not about the case. But it might affect us. I mean, you and I. What's wrong? It's Joss. He got away on his trip, didn't he? He spent last night at home. I went back there after I'd seen him off. He left some washing for the housekeeper as she emptied his pockets and asked me what I could throw away. And? There was something. A packet. A white powder. I'm not an expert, but I know cocaine when I see it. I'm sorry, Campbell. I'm really very sorry. I mean, I mustn't get it out of proportion. I mean, it doesn't mean he's an addict, does it? That's not why I'm sorry. I mean, other people have been through this. Friends, colleagues. Don't say any more. Not a word. Professional complications. Bye, Campbell.
You heard about my son, Greg. Somebody went for him with a bomb and ended up a killer. I was on the news. I'm fixing on all that. Well, that'll be for demolition, is it? Your speciality. And who are you blowing up tonight? Well, off the premises. I'm not talking to you. I'll see you in court, Councillor Allen. What do you mean? He'll be there. It's only a formality anyway. All he can tell you is he had Ackroyd committed to the hospital. Listen, Sam. Thanks for the tip about the paper. It paid off. Day after tomorrow, Dundonald's training ship's coming back from Amsterdam. It'll be a cargo. I'll call you back with a name or names. Any more on Scottish office property sales? Yes, I knew you'd need those. Hello. Hi, oh, yeah. oh, hello, Libby. You're looking better. I feel better, thank you. Thank you. Come on, be great. Right. You've blown it from me, knew you bastard. Relax. No one else knows. We weren't followed. Well? Only one. In there. Mulligan set me up with him. It was the first time I finished up crying because I couldn't do it. What's his name? I usually skip the introductions. I think he said it was Joss. last-minute adjustments to the seating plan. Precedents and so forth. One must want to risk putting noses out of joint. You are retiring, darling. It's not as if you will be around to take the consequences. And it can hardly affect your prospects. I achieved my prospects. Uh, it's a matter of pride to observe protocol to the end. All I'm saying is I don't know if I can trust these people to carry out any last-minute changes. I'm sure they can all read. And that's what it takes, isn't it? I hope you've thought of some topics of conversation to raise with the Secretary of State. The last time you sat next to him, he spent most of the evening staring into space. So the good watches are in position. Where to? Muscle, bro. I've been visible at the races again. The else have been coming leaf for that bitch, Andrea. When I get her, I'll mark her.
coming up to us and the crooks bring their lawyers into court. They're gearing up for the inquiry. Dougie Allen's missing. So is our client, or hadn't you noticed? He'll turn up. Now listen, I'm going to be with you through to the recess, then I'm away to the harbour. I hope your faith in the police pays off. I rang Sam Coots, told him I'd file a complaint if he didn't act on information received. Really? Well, someone's going to move things along. In the absence of support from the senior partner. She's in a difficult position. Yeah, well, just so long she didn't tip off the boy's old man. How dare you? All right, all right, keep your wig on. Ah, at least we've got someone to represent. Where the hell is Doogie Allen? I don't know. I've been calling his home and his workshop for the past hour. Remember, the defense has no case. Sangster hit you. But they've got evidence. But we can explain that, can't we, Mr. Hitch? Morning, Alex. Is this your show? Oh. I suppose I ought to wish you luck. Oh, don't strain yourself. How was Brussels? Accommodating. I heard of a McDowell. It's nasty. He's a survivor, though, isn't he? Well, he's lucky. Let's hope so. For your sake. Would you do something for my sake? We're compiling evidence for the inquiry. There's a suggestion of malpractice in Lennox's department. The Jet Homes Project and a housing development in Nibberton. Oh, you're crazy. It's the best run outfit in the Scottish office, that kind of thing. We'd never get past him. Maybe it didn't get past him. Check him out. No. It's a tacky idea. From a tacky source, I imagine. Romance in bloom again? You touch him for a lead on Lennox. He's just described you as tacky. Really? I didn't think he was that perceptive. <laughs> We're on. Hit them hard with the photographs. Thank you. No reply. I've never known Doogie Allen clothes in a working day before. Okay, so Dougie Allen's went. Who says it was because you scared to shake at him? There's only you knows. I had a witness, one of the social workers. I'll need to go to court. Oh, no. Please. No. You're not leaving me. But you'll be okay. Stay in the flat. Nobody knows you're here. Yeah, well, they know everyone in Christ they were looking. Not today they won't. Maybe tomorrow. But by then you'll be in the clear. Mm. Come on. Make yourself a cup of tea. You know where everything is. Have you got your supplies? Yeah. We'll need to do some work on you, Andrea. Now, what the hell is the point? If I had time, I'd show you. I'd show you girls in a worse state than you who've pulled their lives together. Yeah, well, you think I'm holding out on you. Yeah, well, I'm not. I wasn't in on the bloody deliveries. No, I don't think you're holding out. Walsh, the lawyer that's looking after each. Do you know him? Oh, I know he likes lassies. The younger, the better. Anyone else? There was this one guy a few months ago. Mulligan put on a sort of cabaret, fancy dress disguise. Be one who's supposed to know the punters. Suited me, I never wanted to know. But I saw him afterwards getting in his car. <laughs> Milligan went spare kiss. I got a good look. So I sees her, didn't I? And did you? Oh, I'd know him again. I'd know his voice in the rate. Talked like he was gargling. Stay where you are. I won't be long.
took it up to him, the petition like. And he went right off his trolley and punched me. With considerable force? Yes. That was hard. I was bleeding. And this was in full view of the audience? Oh, yes. Everybody saw it. That is my case, my lord. Thank you, Mr. Beach. You described some heckling and rowdiness at the meeting, Mr. Veach. Are you sure it was no more than that? Well, there might have been a bit of a roar at the end. A roar? Do you mean a concerted effort among your supporters to shout down the opposition? What were they roaring? Sangster out, something like that. Sangster out, sangster out, sangster out, over and over again? I said there was ill feeling. You've explained the residents' grievances in some detail. But could you tell the court if there was any one incident in the past weeks that might have brought matters to a head? People got very upset uh, when Julie Tate took an overdose. Julie Tate? Julie Tate's significance in these matters will become clear as we proceed, my lord. Where did she get her overdose from? From one of the pushes that hangs around the clinic? Would you look at this photograph, Mr. Veach? My lord, I object to this line of questioning. This case is solely about the assault on Mr. Veach by the accused. What possible relevance can this photograph have to the proceedings, Miss Abercorn? The relevance of the photograph will become obvious, my lord. I sincerely hope so, Miss Abercorn. The file is production number four for the defence, my lord. Thank you, Miss Abercorn. Do you recognise this man? Yes, I do. Would you tell the court his name? Milligan, Frank Milligan. What does he do for a living? He's supposed to run girls. You mean he's a pimp? Have you ever had dealings with him? Not dealings, no. In fact, uh, I only met him the once. I uh, set up a meeting with him on Compton Hill one night last week. May we go to production number five for the defence, my lord? Court number one. Yes, ma'am. Will you see Miss Abercorn gets this, please? Certainly. Thank you. Who took this? Never mind who took it. Why did you set up the meeting in question? Well, it was because of what I was hearing from the tenants. His activities are just as disruptive to good order in the Alfred Street area as Dr. Sangster's are. You and Mr. Milligan appear to be on rather good terms. Would you seriously expect the court to believe that these photographs record a first meeting between two men in the circumstances you've just described? I'm telling you that's how it was. Anyway, what's all this got to do with him hitting me? I might ask you the same question, Miss Abercorn. Come to the point. This bears on the witness's credibility, my lord. May I take it one stage further? Mr. Beach, how long have you lived in the Alfred Street area? Five, six months. No longer than that. You moved there from Newcastle? Yes, I did. Where I believe you were well known to the police. I wouldn't say that, no. Were you not implicated in check fraud and theft? The Jet Homes development represents a considerable capital investment. Where did you raise the money? Various sources. Uh, all legal. My, my lawyers can produce uh, accounts. Were these legal sources aware of your criminal record? I don't know. They obviously thought it was a safe bet. Obviously. No more questions. decided you were in court all day? In a minute, Libby. Five urgent calls and all of them trouble. Clear your desk. Catherine. Oh, 
What's all this about? It's about a serious breach of confidentiality. The photographs in the Sangster trial. What do you mean, photographs? If you're not out of here in half an hour, I'll have your things put on the street. Dropped, preferably, from that window. Wait a minute, let's talk about this. You can take what action you like. You can command the entire resources of the London Law Consortium. But we'll fight you. I'll fight you. Now go. And, uh, so we say farewell. I'll miss your dispatches from the marital front. This is a complaint about ethics. I'm not sure the complaint is a leg to stand on. We'll see what happens when a certain high court judge makes the headlines. The less said, the better on these occasions, I think. You mean you didn't recognise Campbell Reed's son in that evening news item? Tie it in with a great McDowell master plan. I wonder how she handled that little moral dilemma. I take the point that Councillor Allen has been cited as an important witness, but uh, I hardly think his absence need delay us from proceeding. With respect, my lord, Councillor Allen was in the chair at the public meeting. I have some relevant questions to put to him. Yes, well, relevance seems to have acquired a rather fluid meaning this morning. I propose an early adjournment for lunch while more efforts are made to locate him. We'll proceed this afternoon whether he's here or not. One more point, my lord. Miss Abercorn. I will be calling a further witness on Dr. Sangster's behalf. Very well, but I shall take a dim view of time wasting. Well? What did you get? You're a joker, McDowell. You're living in a bloody cornflakes packet. Nothing. I don't believe it. You know what I really hate? Amateurs. People who think they can do someone else's job better. There was stuff coming in. That Croyd knew Josh Sangster's sir. Yeah, well, if Sangster believes a lot of dope heads, that's his lookout. It must have been dumped then. It must have been dumped somewhere on the way in. He dumped it. Who told him? Someone must have told him how to get rid of it. Right, well, all he's got is a bag full of souvenirs, like the rest of them. Excuse me while I get demoted. <laughs> wise? Wasn't the last time you stayed late a bit of a disaster? You're very rude, Greg. Rude and insubordinate. In any other practice, you'd have been told that sooner. I wasn't working late. I was waiting for you. 
and if that's what I suspect it is, I hope you'll think again. We've had quite enough dramatic departures for today. Vivian. Yeah? Well, fair enough. I figure that's where the leak came from. I just wish you weren't quite so selective with the righteous indignation. Are you accusing me of telling Campbell Reed to warn his son? Well, somebody warned him. No problem putting a call through to Amsterdam, getting a radio message to the ship. No problem, that is, for someone like Daddy. I'd swear that boy was carrying drugs. So would I. Oh, that's great. That's really terrific, saying it now when it can't make the slightest difference. There's still time. Your mother's evidence about Alan's disappearance gave the sheriff something to think about. At least he adjourned the case until tomorrow. What's the odds? The sheriff expresses his sympathy, imposes a nominal fine. Sangster goes into the inquiry with a blot on his record and gets crucified for it by the opposing counsel. Ultimately, he loses the clinic. That's the agenda for tomorrow. Then we'd better make the most of it tonight. You mean in the half hour you can spare before the social occasion you're so obviously dressed for? Have you spoken to Alex? No. Not even to congratulate her? She did her job, as far as she was allowed. You have a lot to learn. About the law? No, I'm good at the law. It's just the peculiar Edinburgh all in the family application of it I somehow can't get to grips with. About life. About pain and duty and trust and sacrifice and resignation. Resignation. You said it. Here it comes. You'll be well looked after. There's nothing to worry about. I'll join you in Geneva as soon as I can. I'm not an addict, Dad. I don't need treatment. I've explained. If you're to come out of this with any credit, you'll have to admit some kind of problem. That's not too far-fetched, is it? How about you admitting to some kind of problem? Oh, Joss, I do. I really do. We'll talk about it when I see you next. Yes, I've got that. I understand. I do understand. Goodbye. You better tell your police contact we're in business again. What is all this? On second thoughts, I'll use my authority. You'd probably say you'd cried wolf once too often. And I think this ought to go, don't you? I'd hate to see you really humiliated. Hello, police? It's perfect, darling. Mm. It cannot be improved. Now come and have a calming drink before the guests arrive. Half of them will be late, I expect. Manners seem to go by the board these days. You're not still fretting about this guest list. Cancellations, late acceptances. It's confusing for security. I am sure security will cope. People are inconsiderate because basically they do not wish this affair to run smoothly. They're thoughtless, probably. I doubt if there's any ill will. Though I am rather tired of being asked how we can manage to afford it. Early retirement in Italy. I sometimes wonder myself. You shouldn't wonder. You should be ready with an answer. We have been thrifty and astute. You have, darling. I tried to avoid this, but there's no other way. We have to go one stage further. Suits me. Do you know what it means, Andrea? You'll be finished round here. Oh, I'm finished anyway. You get Milligan, you'll see somebody gets me. You'll need to tell them about me, why I came to you. You should tell my counsel you're infected. 
She'll decide if she'll use it. There'll be a few punters getting sleepless nights wondering it. The main thing is to say you handle drugs for Milligan and he's in with Veach. I'll see it. Who's going to believe me? I said what I had to say about Doogie Allen. I was believed. The sheriff's taking notice. I'm a user. I'm no reliable. Stay calm. The way you are now. Tea? Cup of tea? Mm. Even if it works, we only get two of them. And minor charges by the time the lawyers are finished. After the Joss Reed fiasco, if Greg resigns, we'll lose him for the inquiry. London. He'll go back to London. Hi. Oh, talk of the devil. Is this you with no job looking for sympathy? No, this is me dispensing hope to the oppressed. Again? We were just going to have a cup of tea. No time for tea. What's happened? The impossible. The closed ranks have opened ever so slightly. I'm going to be eating humble pie mine in big fruity chunks, but it'll be worth it. Where's Andrea? What's he talking about? Hello. Yeah. How'd you fancy a night out? I don't get this. Lennox won't be pleased to see you. He will, if I grovel. You should have groveled sooner. How do you think it looks? Tomorrow, you're going to lose the case you passed him over for. It'll give him a chance to say, I told you so. He'll like that. If you're expecting to be welcomed back onto the Brussels team... The you... Brussels team could do worse. There's still time. What's happening, Alex? McDowell lost his magic. I take it you still have my invitation. I was tempted to pass it on. Who too? Of course, I wouldn't have blamed you. The faculty's swarming with girls who see you as a prime catch. Will I do? For tonight. You look wonderful. Weren't you expressing doubts about Lennox's integrity this morning? That was this morning. I'll be doing you a favor tonight, David. Really. Trust me. I think that signals the arrival of the Secretary of State. Best foot forward, Hannah. Huh? Which is my best foot, darling. <laughs> I don't want to be here, Coots. I want to be watching the Hearts replay on the TV. Me too, sir. And if it's somebody else playing silly buggers this time, it won't be just you that goes down. It'll be me too. And all because some hooker went and died, eh? Who cares about a bloody hooker anyway? I don't know. Maybe I do, sir. <laughs> See you later. Miss Abercorn, this is a surprise. I decided I wanted to wish you well for your retirement, despite our differences, Mr. Lennox. I would welcome a chance to talk to you later. We seem to be a couple again. I thought you wouldn't mind. Who's that with Catherine? Have you met her? Professionally? No. Um, who is she? Her name is Andrea. Take a good look. Why? What's going on? No details, but when I say move, move. Well, that's it. You're quite sure? Get the laughy. Like Swillam's mythic me deal. That's it. You know what to do. Do I attempt to dazzle our distinguished guest over his second drink? Or do I save the gems and wait for the top table? I 
I don't think we've been introduced, Miss... Uh... Oh, come on. You remember me. Last time I seen you, you were got up like a Roman emperor. I think I was Mary Magdalene. You have an escort, I take it? Milligan Lewitt. I've got something to deliver. Is looking to uh, I cleaned up in the races and all. Isn't it just too much? This is the police. Stay where you are, everyone. Don't move. We've got you, Milligan, and I like it. I really like it. Well, I don't know what's going on, but I'll say this. Look around. You're among friends here. You like a good time. You like civilized people. All oh, criminal work has its attractions, but what does it add up to? Accusing policemen of lying in the witness box. Who needs it? Someone has to do it. Hmm. You know the best thing about travel? When you've done it, you come back to Edinburgh. <laughs> you know those surveys they have about the best places to live? Edinburgh's tops every time. It's tops for us, maybe. Well, exactly, but we are us, so... Move. Go around again with the drinks, will you? I came to ask you to leave. I don't wish my guests disturbed with the scene. I told you. Milligan blew it. He's with the police. So the stuff he's bringing in. Milligan? Who's Milligan? And what precisely is this stuff? Well, if you don't know, you won't be needing this then, will you? The payout money. He said if anything went wrong, I'd to get it back to you. Quite preposterous. <laughs> OK, then. Oh, no, darling. Does the Secretary of State get fed before he goes home? Right. You were great. Yeah. Did something for the doctor, anyway. And Julie. Good luck.
Well, it worked. You look exhausted. Please, let me drive you home. I'm uh, going to walk a little. I want to think. Eve. Thank you. For everything. I'll tell you one thing still bugs me. This way we don't really nail the boy, do we? He has to give evidence. In mitigating circumstances, he'll get probation. He'll be punished enough. You think so? Yes. But what if he was some poor kid from Alfred Street? He'd be doing time. You can't have everything, Greg. Is that a fact? Well, I'll keep trying. <laughs> you seem to have lost the romantic hero. Yes. We're good friends. Good. You know, you do look halfway presentable done up like that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's coming off fast. Really? How fast exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet.